How have you been getting on with uh, your fixated meditations going through the book of Hebrews? I hope you have uh, appreciated them, particularly those reflections at the end of each. I think they have been very helpful and thought provoking. Last week, we saw in verses one to three of Hebrews one, that God is a speaking God. We looked at God's voice, first of all, through the prophets. And then, do you remember, in these last days through his son, we concentrated on that complete and final word through Jesus Christ, who was God's son. Indeed, we looked in some uh, detail, but very quickly at the seven attributes of Jesus that the writer to the Hebrews brings out in verses two and three. And that was something that really should have made us realize that God has a personal interest in us. And he sent his son. This week, we're going on to look at the child in chapter two. We're going on to see how God was fully divine, the Son of God. Jesus came as God's Son, but he was also fully human. And we'll see that as we look in chapter 2. First thing I'd like to look at in chapter 2 is from verse 3. It talks there about the great salvation that the writer mentions here. How shall we escape, he says, if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation that was first announced by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. What is that, this great salvation? Well, at Advent, uh, we have been looking at Advent and, and Gordon reminded us last week that Advent was a time of waiting waiting, preparing for the coming of Jesus. But not only that, preparing and waiting for the coming again of Jesus. And the second advent, you remember uh, the fact that God came the first time as savior, that baby came as savior to save us from what? Well, we will see in a moment. But the second time when he's coming back, he's coming back as judge to judge the world and those in it. When the angel came and told Joseph about Mary expecting Jesus, he said to him, and you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus came to earth the Son of God came to earth as a baby at Bethlehem. And something that we focus on and like to talk about at this Christmas season. He grew up as a boy to become a man. And as a man, he lived in Palestine. He taught his disciples and others. He debated with Jewish leaders and teachers. He was arrested. He was tried. He was sentenced to a horrible death on the cross. And you can read about that in Isaiah 53. He was buried. Then he rose from the dead. And in the words of chapter one that we looked at last week, verse three, after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. That's not the end of the story because he's coming back again. But as with much of this letter, this section today quotes extensively from the Old Testament. We pick this up in June's reading from Psalm 8. On one level, David is talking about mankind. Do you see that in verses 4 and 5 there? What is mankind that you're mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. When we look back at the story of creation in Genesis, we see there that God gave man dominion over the other creatures and over creation, something we do well to remember. But here in, in Hebrews, the writer picks up that psalm 
And in verses 6 to 8a, uh, if you've got your Bibles open in front of you, you'll see these words, what is mankind that you're mindful of them? This a son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. You see, this psalm is one of the messianic psalms. It talks about Jesus. And clearly, it talks about Jesus coming into this world as Messiah. And Jesus himself was prepared to become human. This good news, this story of the gospel couldn't have happened without Jesus becoming human. God couldn't have suffered except that he sent Jesus to be himself a little lower than the angels. As we look at these uh, following verses in chapter 2, there are three things in this passage that underline the greatness of our salvation. So great a salvation. The first of these is that uh, if you see it there in verse 9, but we do see Jesus. Let me just pick up for, for reference that part of the passage after quoting uh, Psalm 8. The writer says this, in putting everything under him, God left nothing that was not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. You look around the world today and you see people doing their own thing. People are not subject to Jesus, but that's only for a little while. And then in verse 9, he picks up this phrase, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, but now he is crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everything. That's the greatness, friends, of our salvation. That's what we've been remembering in our communion today as Andrew led us through that. The death of Jesus at Calvary. His body broken for us. His blood shed for us. But do we see Jesus? And then secondly, on down in that, in that chapter, we see in verse 11, we are of the same family. How great is that? We are of the family of God if we put our trust in the Lord Jesus. Let's read verse 11. It says this, both the one who made, who makes people holy, that's Jesus, and those who are made holy, that's us, are of the same family. Wow, we're part of God's family, not just because he made us, but because he redeemed us, because he saved us, because he died on that cross for us, we are part of the same family. Do you remember that uh, sitcom a few years ago that I think virtually everybody enjoyed, Keeping Up Appearances? You remember Hyacinth Bouquet? Uh, and you remember the fact that uh, she loved to put on appearances, but she was embarrassed by her brother. Do you remember the brother appeared and uh, there's a, a photograph of them there? And, and she was so embarrassed. But this verse goes on to say, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. We are a brother. He is our elder brother. And we saw last week, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for us. What a great salvation. What a great family heritage we have in Jesus. But we see Jesus. We are of the same family. And thirdly and finally, we are free. Wow. How many people during these last nine months have felt confined, have felt that they're not free? We're not free to do what we want. We're not free to go where we want. We're not free to hug other people. We're not free to be with our family. But in verse 14 and on into verse 15, uh, the writer to the Hebrews says this, by his death, by Jesus' death, 
he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. Who's that? That is the devil. Jesus breaks the power of Satan. Verse 15, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask me a question. What do we fear? Do we fear death? I think I can truly say I don't fear death. What I do fear is how I might die. What I do fear is losing the opportunity to see my grandchildren grow and become uh, me, uh, women of God. What I do fear is leaving loved ones behind. But do I fear death? By God's grace, I don't, because I know where I'm going. Pam Barr died just a couple of weeks ago, and she knew where she was going. She's gone to be with her Savior. Others, other friends, other relatives, other neighbors have died. And what a great joy it is for those who put their trust in Jesus, who saw Jesus during their life, who sought to live uh, to please Jesus through their lives, have put their trust in him and he has broken the, f the slavery of fear of death. What a great message. What a great salvation we have. We do see Jesus, we are of the same family, and we are free. What a message for Advent as we wait to celebrate that first coming of Jesus, but also as we wait in anticipation of him coming again to us in judgment. May God bless us today. Amen.